Gentlemen, lady, uh, lady yields back. The gentleman from California, Mr. Kiley, is recognized for five minutes. Good afternoon. Sheriff, could you please uh, summarize the ways that the cartels are involved in illegal border crossings? So you have the Jalisco New Generation in Baja, California. Then you have the Sinaloa Cartel in Sonora, Mexico on our very southern border. So the Jalisco New Generation, theirs is the uh, movement of bodies that are coming across the river corridor. So they are the ones that are coordinating. They actually have contacts in different countries that have been identified as being the travel agents, for lack of a better term, to get the people here and to be able to control that coming across. So right now, between midnight and 4 a.m., 40 at a time come across down by the river corridor. So the Sinaloa cartel, they are the ones that are doing the narcotic side of it. So they coordinate between those that can afford and cannot afford to be able to pay the price. And they utilize those people to smuggle the narcotics in, whether it's on a vehicle through the port of entry or whether it's through the remote deserts of our county. Thank you. So would it be fair to say that the relaxation of, uh, of border policies uh, has uh, redounded to the benefit of the cartels? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just to be blunt, it's been a bonanza for them, right? It's expanded their business opportunities for their criminal, criminal enterprises, has it not? Absolutely. And they, they have scouts that are in our mountains, so they can watch Border Patrol's actions out in the remote part of our desert, so they can coordinate the, uh, the loads getting through, whether they're human or narcotics. <laughs> So we know who's benefiting, and so then we have to ask, who's paying the price? Well, first, of course, is the victims of fentanyl. In 2020, Border uh, Patrol seized 4,800 pounds. 2021, it was 11,200. 2022 fiscal year, it was 14,700. And in just the first four months for the 2023 fiscal year, 12,500. I have a chart here showing basically a quadrupling in overdoses uh, here in Yuma just over the course of a few years, and of course this is not a localized uh, matter. Uh, throughout the country, fentanyl poisoning is now the leading cause of death for young people, more than car accidents, more than suicides, uh, more than anything. Uh, Sheriff, is it your opinion that fewer Americans would be dying of fentanyl poisoning if the border was as secure as it was at the start of this administration? Absolutely. In addition to the victims of fentanyl, we then have the victims of human trafficking uh, as well. Uh, and uh, Supervisor, I believe we discussed earlier some evidence that you've seen of the increases in the impact of human trafficking uh, here in Yuma. Yeah, so in the first three months, we've seen a 350% uptick in human trafficking, people who have come forward seeking assistance uh, on their own, who have declared that they have been trafficked. And if nine were willing to do it, I'm sure that there are many more out there um, looking to, to free themselves of, of that bondage. Sheriff, is it your opinion that fewer people would be suffering through the horror of human trafficking if the border was as secure as it was at the start of this administration? Absolutely. And then we have the migrants themselves. In 2022, 856 died attempting to cross the border. That was 300, 300 more than it was in 2021, and three times as many as it was just in 2020. Sheriff, is it your opinion that fewer migrants would be dying crossing the border if the border was as secure as it was at the start of this administration? Yes, sir. So there you have it. We have a set of policies that has been a bonanza for the cartels, for foreign criminal organizations, and this windfall is being underwritten by pain and suffering and death. That's why this is not a partisan issue. You know, usually we have to weigh costs and benefits, we have to adjudicate uh, competing values, but here it's just bad all the way around. It's negative on both sides of the ledger. And so how does this make any sense? Well, it really only makes sense when you look at it from a political perspective. We had a set of border policies that was working. Everyone here will tell you that. And this administration came into office and in order to make a political statement, not only reversed those policies, but swung the pendulum radically in the other direction, exploding whatever bipartisan consensus there was on this issue and ushering in a crisis unlike we have seen in American history. So I'm not interested in criticizing our colleagues on the other side of the dais for not being here. I want to encourage them to come here, talk to the supervisor, talk to the sheriff, talk to the hospital, see what we have seen, and I want to work with anyone who is interested in getting this crisis under control. That includes the president, 
who I implore to accept responsibility, to admit his policies have failed, to find a new Secretary of Homeland Security, and let's all work together to replace pro-cartel policies with pro-America policies.